All right. So Saturday, the first of second, of, first of April. Yeah. April, April Fool's Day. Yeah. Right. So uh, and it's about five o'clock. Sorry, five o'clock. And I've just finished work. Pick Lee up, and we're going to uh, an Iron Age hill fort in the Cheviots. So. Pretty moody, but it's not raining. So I look forward to this, Lee. I am. Sleep. New tent. Testing. Yeah, you know, got two two new shelters <laughs> to test, and this is Lee's first wild camp of the year. Yeah. It's only my uh, third, I think. So anyway, just a short intro. Have a bit more crack when we get at the top. So we've got, obviously you've just seen, we've got to the top of the hill fort and there we just found a couple of relatively flat pitches. Had to kick quite a lot of shit out the way, like there's a lot of uh, sheep shite here, isn't there Lee? Yeah. So anyway, parked at Hethpool, which a very short walk along the track and then up the side of the plantation to Great Heather, which is, like I said, an Iron Age hill fort. So anyway, without further ado, we'll get our shelters up and then we'll show you our new tents. Right, we're pitched. I'll show you Lee's new tent first. So he's got himself a Van Gogh Nevis 200. He hasn't pitched it in an angle yet, it's just like in the back garden, but but seems seems alright. I don't think we're gonna be facing too much hostile wind. And then I've rescued a MLD Trail Star in DCF from eBay. And it's my first pitch out in the wild. I've done it in the back garden on a perfectly flat lawn. And I've picked a pretty lumpy, bumpy area, very rocky. So I've struggled getting all the pegs in, as you can see. Some of the pegs I kind of get in, but the main ones I've managed to get, get in enough anyway. So, uh, pitched, I've a few alterations, tightened it all up, but it's all right. Considering it's my first time pitching a DCF trail star in the wild and where I am, how rocky it is, I haven't done bad. Luckily enough, it's not particularly windy, so although some of the pegs aren't in fully, we should get away with it. But if we don't, it doesn't matter. We're only a mile from the car. Anyway, Les has joined us. So I'll give you a little spin around. So obviously that's the, the door. Uh, <laughs> Probably doesn't give you the impression of loads of room. Because it's a bit messy today in here, like, but plenty room. It's knee door, or Steve? Knee door, but that doesn't matter though, Lee, <laughs> because the wind's gunning that away, so the rain should shoot past the door. That's the theory, anyway. If the wind turns direction, it's another story I'm in with you, mate. <laughs> anyway, to, we've got the trans here, I've remembered it, and I've brought some fuel and a lighter. So we're going to have a chicken curry based on like a South Indian recipe. So in other words, a bit coconutty. So I'm going to get cracking with that. I probably won't show you the full thing, but I'll, I'll do my best. I don't want to bore you to death with me cooking. Right, so the stove's lit. I've got some solid coconut oil in there. Saves us taking up like oil that can spill. Uh, 
So I'm going to make a chicken curry, as I said. I'm not going to show you as doing the whole thing. I'll just show you it towards the end. But in that fat, I'm going to put some um, like whole spices, like must mustard seeds and cumin seeds. Then fry the onions for a long time. Then add some ground spices, which is garam masala, coriander powder, cumin powder. Then I'll put the chicken in, which I've marinated in uh, natural yogurt, full fat natural yogurt, some garlic and ch uh, ginger paste, and some turmeric. So once I've uh, cooked some of the meat off, then some chopped tomatoes, some coconut cream, fresh coriander. Anyway, so curry and rice are done. I'm going to hand the camera to Lee and I'll, and I'll talk you through it. Eh? <coughs> oh, wrong, wrong way. <laughs> so in here, we'll make sure we haven't got any grass going in it like. So we've got a curling, curling chicken curry. So it's mainly like coconut oil and then using coconut milk and uh, and all that. Chicken thighs, lovely. And then in here, we've got a nice rice with some dry fruit and uh, cashew nuts and so on. So, gonna divvy it up and I'll maybe show you it in the bowl in situ, okay? There you go. Curling chicken curry with basmati rice in situ. Nice. <laughs> right, gonna enjoy this. And I might not even bring you back now until the morning. So I wish you night, God bless. Late. Good wish night. Night, night. Morning. So the uh, the clags cleared, as you, you could see from the last shot. Uh, nice bit of sunrise. Slept reasonably well. Well, as well as I normally do, you know, a bit broken. Like I said, just a quick one, just to test the new trail star out. And uh, Lee wanted to test his tent out, I must say. Love it, loads of room. I think I could have picked a better pitch, like I struggled to get some of the pegs in because it's rocky, <laughs> but that was just my own daft fault. And the ground wasn't very even in here, so I was uh, slipping a little bit, but other than that, brilliant. Right, anyway, get breakfast, get packed up, and then get back to the van. Right, that's it, we're packed up, as always, we've left no trace. I'll tell you who has left a trace though, there's sheep, there's shit everywhere isn't there Lee? Yeah. Literally everywhere. There's only two sheep up here as well you know. Christ, anyway, great camp, so that was great Heather. Did you enjoy that Lee? I did. Very good. Definitely come back. At least we got some views this morning, like, because last night it was just clagged out, couldn't see a thing. But I had a great night, though. Like I said, a bit of an equipment test. And both new tents did really well. So anyway, we're going to make our way off the hill, back to the van. It's only a mile. And we'll get home, get on with Sunday. So thanks for watching. Catch you next time.